murderer must have followed trail from Arno and Yamada. He will come for us now. We must be vigilant. Thierry's girl broke into Pierre's safe. She worries me. Imelda. So much for Imelda's innocence. Plantard was working for her. And for Conchon. But why did Plantard want to meet? Was it a trap? Or maybe he was in too deep and needed me to tell a story. Whatever the story was. One thing was clear. It was a story worth killing for. <coughs> so, I finally managed to crack it. I had some minor problems, but I made it. Made it. Another coded message using the same... So, Plantard was involved with Cochon. Plantard. Pierre killed. Murder. He will come for Thierry's good okay. and for what... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's take the bottle. Take the whiskey bottle. Some journalists drink on the job, not me. Fine. <clears throat> I didn't say drink it, I just said pick it up. Hey, what about my photos? Oh, of course. How could I forget? Well, I'm waiting. Get your camera out. Camera. <laughs> oh, I forgot. It broke. Hello. They should never send a woman to do a man's job. <laughs> well, this woman had fooled him easily enough. And found the evidence the police had missed. Okay, guess I'm done here. <laughs> I can't even can't never come back from the horse race. <clears throat> oh, something's gonna happen, I think. As I... The strange metal artifact I found in Plantard's pouch had pointed back to the quayside. To what now? Oh, the dark thing, right? Yeah. <coughs> oh, the I know. Must look familiar. I know where to go. I know where to go. Oh. I have to do this part again. And upsy daisy. <coughs> and then we take the stone cylinder and shove it in the hole. Hopefully it will just open, but probably not. Oh yeah, it did. Now we take this cylinder, shove it in this hole. He fitted the lock, so he must have used this place too. A what photograph had been torn up. Oh, it's the other part of the photograph I had. Is if it? I could just arrange the pieces. Oh no. Oh no. Well, this doesn't look too difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> I'm actually quite good at puzzle games. Oh my god. It can't be. Dun, 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 your father was one of them. Kind of figured he would be. Uh, see here. Oh, okay, I, I can't move them afterwards. Okay, well, let's build the edge up first, then. <coughs> oh, you go there.
Dun, dun, there dun. was no doubt about it. It was <coughs> a picture of my father. Papa? Oh, God. After what I'd gone through, I thought I could face anything. But not this. My father, the one person in the whole world who I truly admired, standing with Crachon while those murderers carried on with their evil work. My father, grinning at the camera. I couldn't believe it. I realized that I desperately needed to get to the bottom of this story, and that I really needed George. Nothing else? All right then, let's leave. <coughs> <laughs> Talk to the old lady. Oh, hi. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good. It only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. <laughs> <coughs> What can you tell me about this material? It's a very expensive piece of cloth, monsieur. What can you tell me about this tissue? Nothing. Do you recognize this nose? No, monsieur. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Thanks for telling me. What other <laughs> flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. <laughs> do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me in the apartment block across the street. The door isn't locked, but you'll need to give it a gentle nudge. It sticks, you see, because of the damp. The landlord said he'd fix it before winter sets in. He's been saying that for three years. <laughs> How long has <coughs> Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months, she's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating. It's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. Have you seen anyone out here watching Mademoiselle Collard's apartment? Yes, I have. A strange man. Tall and thin as a broomstick. He kept his face hidden. But I saw his eyes peering from evil little slits. How was he dressed? A long brown raincoat with a hat. Or like Humphrey Bogart. Yes, but he didn't have Bogart's charisma. Besides, this guy looked like he needed a toilet. You never saw Bogart clenching his buttocks like that. <laughs> Is there anything else you can tell me about Mademoiselle Collard? No, monsieur. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My, oh my. What a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? How does this fortune-telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a built-in receiver dish. <coughs> we just happen to be one of the lucky ones. 
Right. See you later. That's right, Monsieur. You will. That's creepy. <laughs> All right, let's go visit her. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently, just above the lock. Hi. Bonjour. I'm glad you could make it, Monsieur. Uh, please uh, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers underneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck. Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? My editor told me to drop the story. Can you believe it? But you're not going to do that. Oh, no. I'm going to find out what's behind these killings. It just doesn't add up. It almost feels like some sort of conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arnold Bellotta, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it, millions of housewives literally speeding their butts off. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was lured to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. How did he die? At the hands, or should I say flippers, of a giant emperor penguin. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. I had been about to add mine to the list, but stopped myself. I really <coughs> didn't want to have to explain to George about my father's involvement with Cachon. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you this, I will not be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance for a big break. Or an early death. Tell me more about yourself. <laughs> There's nothing much to tell. Well, how'd you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought me my first camera. I was eight, and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes. My mother went off with her new boyfriend. I didn't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted me to study art. That's why I went to college. Did you learn about photography at college? Oh, God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. <laughs> I found a piece of material <coughs> near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George, it's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy is wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his right cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Or a crescent moon. I think more a ho ho horseshoe rather than anything else. I found this tissue down the sewer. <laughs> That's disgusting, George. No, no, no. I think the stuff on it is grease paint. Like actors use, or clowns. It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. <laughs> Why does nobody like my grease paint napkin? I found this false nose in the sewer. Hey, what's this inside it? The contents of someone's nose? Don't be cross, George. It says La Rite du Monde. Masks and costumes. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint-Lazare. I'll check it out. 
Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. <laughs> This is the tool I use to get into the sewers. Fascinating, George. You're not interested, are you? Oh, of course I am. I think it was very brave of you to go down those sewers. Yeah? Well, it was kind of scary, but... Well, I had a job to do. <laughs> All right, let's go. I have to go. Okay, I'll see you later. Hmm. So... To the costume shop. Actually, before we do anything else, let's go ahead and save. Yes, I changed the name to RAR. <laughs> <coughs> Just in case it crashes or something. Excuse me. Bonjour, monsieur. Please, come in. Welcome. Leave the mundane world behind. For in these four walls, Fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible! You'll be telling me next that you never shared your elder sister's lingerie? <laughs> I don't have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly in a brassiere. I just need some information. Of course. How can I help you? I'm looking for a man who hired a clown costume from you. Oui, monsieur. I do not see how I can help. Don't you keep a record of costumes that you've rented out? Of course, monsieur, but... Uh... Well, then, I'd like to check your records. Give me the names of everyone who's rented a clown suit. Impossible. There are too many. Have you heard of a man named Plantile? I do not recall any one of that name. Oh, yeah, Plantard was the guy that you, she was going to meet. Dur Does this herb? dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me smell that. <laughs> Best Imers number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La creme de la creme of Cespian accoutrement. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes, two can. To who? <laughs> Do you want this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. Do you recognize this man? Ah oui, he was here this morning. That is the man to whom I sold the grease paint. I da remember da da. the scar on his face. He chose two costumes. Bozo the clown and Seamus the pixie. A pixie? Very smart. Green silk with a taffeta lining. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. What does this tool mean to you? Nothing, Monsieur. All right, well, we're Thanks off. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, <coughs> Monsieur. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Huh? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Figured. <laughs> What are you trying to do, kill me? You did not find it amusing? I never saw the funny side of electroshock therapy. Eh bien, it is yours to keep. A gift? Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet. <laughs> Ouch! I can feel it now, oh god. Ow, 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 that's gonna hurt. Mm. <laughs> Hi. Oh, hello. Remember to switch it off before going to the toilet. Oh, God. <sighs> I feel sorry for anyone who has forgotten to switch that off. Oh, this is a bad idea. The guy at the novelty shop gave me this. What is it? A hand buzzer. You put it in your hand okay. and give people electric shocks. Why? It's a gag. A practical joke. <laughs> if you ever use it on me, I'll break your arm. Okay, okay. 
I get the picture. <laughs> well, apparently I cannot talk I to her about go. what okay. needs to be done. I'll see you later. But what I need to do though is end this episode because I'm out of time. So I thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And I will see you guys later. Bye.